I love electrons. Why? Because they control the behavior of atoms and molecules. And that's what we want to understand. How do we learn about tiny objects like atoms and molecules? Well, we do it like we always have. We shine the light on them or we look at the light that they shine on us. In year 1600, Johannes Kepler and Tycho Brahe stood on this balcony, looked at the sky and observed light arriving from distant planets to study their motion. From those observations, Kepler later derived the three laws of motion of planets, two of them here in Prague. Today, we continue using light in a similar way, but to image femtosecond and attosecond motion of electrons in atoms and molecules. But electrons obey the laws of quantum physics. So what does it change? Quantum properties of atoms were first predicted by Bohr and later confirmed using the result of the famous Frank and Hertz experiment in mercury vapor that was carried out in 1914. As you know, in this experiment, atoms of mercury are excited from the ground to the first excited state by impact of an electron. This type of collision plays an important role in many fields of physics. Do you think that this collision is boring and easy to understand? Well, I'll show you it's not. The voltage between the cathode and the anode controls the maximum kinetic energy gained by the electron. In neon gas used here, we can observe the excited atoms through the red light emitted by the atom when it decays back to the initial state. The light can be used to analyze properties of the excited and the initial state. This simple experiment proved that the new Bohr's quantum theory was headed in the right direction. Energy loss of the electron in the collision is given by separation of the peaks in the current measured in the Frank Hertz experiment. This difference is about 4.9 eV and should be equal to the difference in the energy levels of the atom. However, the first excited state in Mercury lies approximately at 4.67 eV. This is a small difference, but can we explain it? Mercury is a monstrous heavy atom with 80 electrons, where relativistic effects are important. This means that upon excitation, the lowest triplet state is split by spin-orbit interaction into three states. The splitting of the states takes place on the ultra-fast femtosecond timescale. The lowest state has the energy of 4.67 eV, but the incoming electron excites each of these levels with a different probability. It turns out that the cross-section for the lowest state is the smallest. Furthermore, since the excited state is a triplet, it can be reached from the singlet ground state only by exchange collisions. This means that the incoming electron and the atomic electron switch places during the collision. Therefore, the electron that emerges from the collision was originally part of the atom. Would you have guessed that? Last but not least, the unbound electron can get trapped for about 10 to minus 13 seconds in the vicinity of the molecule in the so-called resonance state. The existence of these states is evident in the calculated cross-sections as sharp peaks. Resonances significantly change the probability with which the electron excites each state and are responsible for the dominant excitation of the triplet P1 state in the Frank Hertz experiment. Therefore, the energy loss obtained from the Frank Hertz curve is the result of a complicated collision process where relativistic effects, exchange collisions and the formation of short-lived resonance states play a key role. In fact, resonance states are peculiar solutions of the Schrödinger equation for complex electron energies. But there are no electrons with complex energies. So for that reason, we observe resonances only indirectly in the measured cross-sections, much like shadows on the wall, rather than looking at them directly. It took almost 70 years before accurate calculations of cross-sections for Mercury were possible and the Frank Hertz experiment was explained in detail. This is what we do in our research. We perform accurate calculations of interaction of molecules and atoms with electrons, positrons and photons. But don't worry, it doesn't always take 70 years. All the interactions that play a key role in the Frank Hertz experiment remain intensively studied. Nevertheless, 
more than 100 years after the Frank Hertz experiment, one of the challenges is to understand collision dynamics in larger systems, such as DNA and the smaller molecules in it. Just like in the Frank Hertz experiment, there are a number of resonances in these molecules that form in excitation by electron impact. However, we still do not know how many of these resonances influence breakup reactions that may lead to DNA damage. We have recently developed the tools to calculate all resonances in the complex plane. This allows us to look at them directly and to analyze all the peaks in the cross-section in detail. But many types of resonances remain unexplored. Using ultra-fast and strong lasers, we can measure how long it takes for an electron to escape from a molecule when it's ionized. These times are measured in attoseconds. We are now able to perform calculations with and without electron correlation and to estimate the delay introduced by the correlated motion of several electrons, as in this example for the CO2 molecule. When energy of the laser field becomes comparable to the energy that is holding electrons inside the system, the bound states become resonances and we observe tunneling ionization. This process can be strongly influenced by electron correlation too, as was predicted by our colleagues some time ago. It was exciting for us to observe in our calculations how the intensity of the strong laser field can be used to suppress or enhance the correlated electron motion. Nevertheless, there is still more that we could do to improve our results and to get more insight. We are still far away from being able to fully understand many processes that happen in atoms and molecules. For example, what happens when multiple electrons are ejected from a molecule? What is the role of coupled electron nuclear dynamics in collision processes? Are there more efficient approaches for describing electron-electron correlation? These are only some of the challenging problems we are exploring, and we need your help. Would you like to join us on our journey?